right, let's bring in the panel. Barry Hewson, Executive Director of the National Ballet of Canada. Perrin Leach, General Director of the Canadian Opera Company. Paul Thomas, Program and Music Director for the New Classical FM and Zuma Radio. Kathleen Kajioka, Host and Co-Music Director of the New Classical FM. And also a world-renowned violist and violinist. And Ian Cusson, a composer of Métis and French-Canadian descent. It's good to have you all here. Kathleen, I'll start with you. Broad strokes. How would you describe the state of the classical music industry? Because depending on the source, some say it's thriving, some say it's dying, maybe it's somewhere in between. I think, uh, I think it's actually a, an exciting moment for classical music. I wouldn't say that it's dying. You can tell by the numbers of young people who still want to pursue careers in classical music. I can only speak anecdotally, but I don't hear any uh, worries about admissions at music schools. Uh, I think what's happening is that this is a genre that enjoyed automatic high status and reverence for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it, during that time, for generations, didn't have to work very hard at thinking about relevance, resonance, and connecting with the current population. It was kind of that ivory tower kind of you know, elitist uh, aura around it, which frankly, I have never thought served the music very well. It, didn't, it doesn't help people connect with it and get what is really there to be gotten out of it. So now, as that is crumbling, that old structure is crumbling, it's a great moment where you see organizations, creators, presenters now starting to wake up and think in those terms. Ian, do you agree? Is the industry transforming? Absolutely. I think it's it is really an exciting time. Um, I take all that you said, Kathleen, but um, you know the types of stories that we're willing to tell now, the, the ones especially that haven't been told historically on stages and in concert halls is really, I think, an exciting moment, especially as we think about the future of these art forms that we, that we work in, um, in terms of their, their continued relevance and in, in terms of their interest in, in generating new audiences. I think this is critical. Perrin, same question. I mean, people have been worried about opera's demise for about four centuries now. It's yeah. a very old form of art. Is it in need of saving in 2022? It's a 450 year old art form that's been in trouble for 449, yeah. <laughs> um, so is it in need of saving? No, it's in need of evolution, for, for sure. I think that um, relevance is something in, in, uh, that is relatively a new conversation in terms of you know the, the majority of the operatic canon doesn't tell relevant stories. It tells stories about horrific things that have happened or made up things. But we now want to tell stories that actually people can relate to, resonate, and have so many more voices telling those stories. And I think that's where we, where the opera industry is slow to start, but is, uh, is now going at a real pace of telling new stories and using words and music to tell stories, which is really all opera is. But I think we're, we're constantly, um, you know, in addition to telling new stories, I agree, Perrin, 100% that we've, we've got to be telling stories that are relevant to um, the public that we're um, serving today and tomorrow. But I also think we have to look at those, those stories, those canon works that are... Um, that, that are really about the development of the art form, but um, are stories that have done harm. And how do we um, honor the classical tradition while also adjusting those stories in ways that cause, that, that cause less harm? Um, and so we're, we're really in a process of that. I mean, we just built a brand new Swan Lake uh, last season. Uh, Karen Kane created a, a new Swan Lake, which was very traditional. It went back to the Eric Bruin version um, that the company uh, started doing in the 1970s. But it's, um, she really wanted it to be um, to relevant, and she spent a lot of time sitting with the dancers talking about themes and storylines from other productions of Swan Lake and what, um, what was offensive and what was, um, what was important what were the important threads to keep and what were some things that we could let go of? Um, and she incorporated that into this production uh, quite beautifully. I want to get back to that comment in a little bit, uh, especially how it relates to even the Nutcracker and some of like the, the traditional classics that sure. are performed on stage. But Paul, so much of this discussion hinges on plotting a course for a sustainable future. And there's an assumption that when it comes to the fine arts, audiences tend to skew older, for which the only answer is to bring in younger audiences. I mean, to what extent is that an issue for the classical performing arts world? Uh, well, speaking from the media side of things, uh, here at the New Classical FM, which is Canada's largest commercial classical radio station, we are enjoying uh, a bit of a revolution where there are tons 
of younger listeners hopping on board. Um, I think a lot has to do, there's a lot of factors going into this, but I think a lot has to do with the, the increased popularity of soundtrack music. Um, I know I grew up, I got into classical music because uh, the first CD I bought with my own money was John Williams' score to Star Wars. And, you know, that was my first love. And then that led me down the path of discovering more and more orchestral music. And I think that, coupled with the general accessibility to quality music that um, the internet provides, makes a big difference. Because when I was a kid, if when I was listening to that Star Wars soundtrack, the internet was not a thing. These social media forums were not really a thing. We're talking the early 90s. Um, you know, yes, it was inventive, but it wasn't a thing. And so I was kind of in my own little world, and all of my friends were like, what are you listening to? Like, jump over, listen to New Kids on the Block with the rest of us. But now I can hop online and find tons of people that are listening to orchestral music, and that perception of, you know, oh, it's a genre that you're into because your parents got you into it is no longer the case. People are able to hop online, look up good music, and immediately be delivered, you know, Debussy's Claire de Lune, for example. All right, hold that thought because I need to take a quick break. So we'll pick this up on the other side. Don't go away. (laughs) 